Chapter 23 places nine doubts as to whether Natalie Dubois' funeral would even take place at all. Not only had been entirely baseless concern. After all, a whole month had elapsed since the child had received news from Alice on the Santa Monica Pier of the forthcoming event, and no further mention of it had ever been made. Blaze's mother, Helena, had returned stubbornly, tight-lipped on the subject, and leaving her daughter to wonder why, if ever, the crows could agree to the importance of mourning the dead in a timely fashion, none of the grown-ups in her immediate sphere of activity could seem to do likewise. What Blaze had not been aware of, but soon would find out, was the extent to which Natalie herself had harbored just such gnawing doubts and had therefore taken the precaution of creating a memorial service of her own, devising well in advance of its needs. Having taken the ancient Ganga Atari ceremony loosely as her model, Natalie had fashioned a simple ritual, left explicit instructions as to how they should be carried out with her husband, Siddhartha Gupta, guests in accordance with Natalie's plan were to be to meet in a certain courtyard at the meditation garden with the natural spring fed lake. From there they would each proceed to wish a wish on a small piece of paper. The wish, along with the votive candle, would be placed in a tiny boat constructed from palm frond and launched on the lake at dusk. Guests would then walk around the perimeter of the lake to admire the effect created by their many floating candle boats before reconvening in the courtyard to drink a cup of chai in memory of Natalie Dubois. Not only did Natalie expressly expect these instructions to be carried out to the letter, but as she had jokingly admonished Siddhartha, she fully expected to be present at the event in some way, shape, or form to make sure that they were. More than likely, I'll go barefoot and be wearing my I canary yellow sari. That way, it'll be hard to miss, she had quipped lightheartedly to Siddhartha, finding her gallows humor almost too much to bear, had forced a weak smile nevertheless. Blaze, it must be noted, at the tender age of six, had been no stranger to the Ganga Atri. Having attended such an event two years earlier, at the spring-fed lake with her parents as well as her aunt Paloma and the younger cousin Clyte. They had been during, it had been during the evening's festivities that Blaise had learned firsthand how easily the veil of separation that ordinarily keeps the worlds of the spirit and matter apart can be penetrated and allow for the two spheres to intersect in often unexpected ways. On that particular evening, the interlopers between the worlds had been the Fairies, who had brazenly managed to snatch a tiny gold and sapphire baptismal ring from off the child's finger, if not for the skillful arbitration in the coming days of the barrel-chested monastic with the Gallic accent, who was wise to the fairies' ways, all might not have ended well. Blessed with his practiced intervention, however, Blaze and her ring were not only soon reunited, but the child could now count the fairies among her closest allies, along with the little black cat who lived on the grounds, with whom the elfin mischief-makers frequently consorted. On this occasion, Blaise had learned of Ganga Tari to be held in Natalie's honor, as the child had pretended to nap in the near early afternoon sun that filtered through the casement of the bungalow on the Venice canals onto the window seat where she had been curled up cozily with her own black cat, Orpheus. While listening to, on, to in on the telephone conversation that her mother, Helena, had been having with Alice, she learned that the long-awaited Zuzu had arrived from France at last, and that it, the news had to be commented. However, something else quite unfortunate had also happened. As near as Blaise could understand, Jean Noël had seen a UFO and had, consequently, been put in a hospital. He was so sick that he wouldn't be able to come to his own mother's funeral. This had only served to reawaken the worst of the child's fears. But when the following day, Helena had announced that they would all be departing at 4 p.m. in the vintage navy blue VW Bug to pick up Alice at the Sovereign Hotel and head to the meditation garden 
with a natural spring lake fed for Natalie's funeral, Blaise had realized with a deep sigh of relief that all her fears had indeed been for naught.